Hello and welcome to Made by Michiel. In this tutorial I will show you how to make a model in FreeCAD the wrong way, but a way that is commonly used. Then we will break that model and then I will show you how to fix it. So this is what you see when you open up FreeCAD. We will create a new, go to the part design workbench. I'm not going into too much details about what this does. I'm going to assume you already know how the part design workbench and the sketcher work. I'm going to pick the YZ plane as a support for my sketch. And I will make a simple rectangle. And I'm not going to constrain it fully, but I will do some basic constraints. Don't want it to waste too much time on this to save you time and me time. So now we have a sketch. I'm going to do a pad operation. And I'm going to make it 50 high. That's about right. Maybe make it 60. Double click. 60. All right. Okay. Now. What is common practice, but actually kind of wrong, is to select a new face and start a new sketch based off of that face. And the reason that it is wrong is that you're basically creating something on generated geometry or topology. So whatever happens when you change the original sketch is that the new sketch that you just made will not know where to go from again. Same with the operation I'm going to use now, which is create an edge link to external geometry. I have the box selected. I'm going to choose the um, two sides on the outside to link these two points to with a coincident constraint. So, because this is the area I want to cut off. Okay, as you can see, the sketch is fully green, so fully constrained. And I'm going to use a pocket operation on it. Let's say 50. Yeah, that's about, yeah, that'll do. Now, on this pocket, um, if you press space, you can see the geometry that the pad created on the pad. And if you go back to the pocket and press space there to make it visible, you can see the part that the pocket created. So I will select this face, which is part of the pocket operation, create a new sketch on that. And I will make this object. I'm not going to constrain it too much. I'm not too worried about that now. The reason I make it go through this is because I want it to affect both the old operation which is the original pad and the new operation which is the uh, pocket and I want it to be fully through it so let's make this large and I have a reason for doing that which I will get to in a minute as well 18 now let's just go for a full 100 why not 120 yeah nice and long if you go into view draw style wireframe, you can see that the inside of it is empty. In other words, it created a clean solid model. Now a shortcut for that would be V3. I'm going to use V7 to go back to the shaded with wires mode because, hey, that's what I want to use. All right, now let's show, uh, actually first, let's save this file out as the original copy. So new folder, uh, break it. Project. That's nice. Break it. Total real. Open it. Base file. There you go. Now let's go to the sketch again and edit it. There are two things I want to do to it. Why? Can you just go back to top view, please? So I added a cube. I'm going to trim the sides. I'm not going to explain the operations of the sketcher too much because I'm kind of assuming that you guys know how to use it. It's um, pretty standard CAD operations. And these will break all constraints that I had on there, more or less. And that's just make these equal. That's fine. Okay. Now, uh oh, what happened now? My model broke. Let's also save it out like this so you can see. Broken model zero zero. Well, what happened? What happened was that when we altered the first sketch, the generated geometry from the pad operation changed. If you make only the pad visible, you see that it actually, you know, it generated the new geometry as we would expect it from the pad but it didn't carry that on through the pocket. 
So if we go deeper into the pocket and we also make that sketch visible, you can see that the sketch all of a sudden is on a completely different face. Now, why is this? Because when we created the um, sketch originally, we mapped it to a face that was here, right? And if we select the sketch real quick again, you see over here on the left uh, bottom side, attachment support is pad and face number two. If you go to this face here, it's no longer named face number two. In the bottom left corner here, you would see that it is now face 11. Whereas in this face here, oh, that's face three. Okay, don't know why it's not face two then, but whatever. We're gonna fix it anyhow. The way to fix it is to select the face that you want to map it to again and click this icon here, set the support of a sketch. Then we're going to select the sketch that we use for this. The sum of the selected big expenses, that's nice. Circular dependencies, I don't know why it decided to do that. Oh, because we're in the pocket, that's why. Make the pad visible, do the same thing again. Sketch 001. Flat face, current suggested, yes, that's the one we want. Now we're going to have a few problems. And I'm going to show you what those are. First and foremost, we still have those external edges that we don't want. When we did this um, button right here, create an edge link. So I'm going to delete that. And that means that I should be able to move this around again. But not this, because the bottom point here, this bottom point is still linked by a constant constraint to this line. And this line is now part of another face, which is on this whole thing here. We don't want that. So I'm going to also delete that. Go back to the view that I want, which is the right view. And what I'm going to do now is again use this. Now, this is not proper workflow, but then again, proper workflow is something you would set it up better from the beginning using datum planes. I'll go into the proper way to do that in another tutorial. But for now, I'm going to fix it like this, which is also fine if you don't plan on changing it afterwards. It's just you need to be aware of that you're linking to generated geometry so that every time you change the original geometry, it's going to give you issues in a new one. So let's make this visible. And so by pressing space on the pocket, and you can see that right now it did again what we were expecting it to do. Now, does it carry over to the last operation? No, it doesn't. It doesn't it didn't map to this face. It mapped to some other face that, um, yeah. So let's fix that as well. We wanted it on this face. So again, we select that face on the pocket operation. We select pocket operation, map to face, and we select the last sketch. Flat face current suggested, yes. Go back to the pad and we will probably need to recompute it. Recompute object. And as you can see, it has now fixed the model. And if you press V and three, that's a shortcut. You will see that once again, it's a nice solid model. I can also turn off the visibility of this sketch by now. We don't need it anymore. Now, as a little bit of a bonus, there are some things we can play with. Uh, for example, I'm going to delete this pad and I'm going to delete this pocket. Yeah, that's fine. So that now they're not really mapped to anything anymore. Then on this pad, what I'm first going to do is select this sketch, sketch 02. And um, crud. I'm not sure if that's going to work, but you know, let's just try it. Add a pad operation symmetric to plane and let's call it what well, did we have 120 again yes so now you can see v3 again we have a nice solid model cool right yeah okay next step this time we're going to use the sketch that we used for the pocket last so as a second operation we're going to create a pocket and we're going to make this again 50 and as you can see, it doesn't just pocket, basically the order of the operations has changed. So last time, the first time we did this, first we did a pad on the original sketch, then we did a pocket, and then we created another pad, which meant that this model, this sketch here, went all the way up. 
after the pocket operation. This time we did the pocket operation last, which means that uh, first we have the pad, then the other pad, and then it does a pocket operation on everything. So um, yeah, there's no really easy way that I know of to change that around, except for deleting the pads and the pockets and doing the operations on the sketches. I hope this tutorial wasn't too long by then, by now, so I'm gonna yeah call it quits. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, um, please consider leaving a thumbs up and subscribing. All right, cheers, peace out.